Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. I want to welcome all of you back to the 100 Days of Zentangle Project 2021. Thank you guys so very much for being with me today and each day on this journey. Our tangle for today is going to be Garlic Cloves. It is by Jacqueline Bredenurd. And garlic cloves is awesome. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to do something very, very zenful, okay? I want you to not worry about what I'm doing or matching what I'm doing. What we're going to do is something very, very relaxing, okay? So, so take some deep breaths with me. Let those shoulders fall down. Breathe some more. Bloody breathe, people. Bloody breathe. All right. Relax your arms and your hands. Take a very gentle hold on your pencil. We are going to draw some funky borders in today because I like my borders to be funky. So I'm going to start with putting a pencil dot in each corner. And then I'm just going to go for it with my craziness. And let's see. Now I did cross over right here just a little bit, uh, the pencil, but don't worry about that. In fact, let me just, there. Okay, now we don't have to worry about it. All right, so this is what I'm going to do um, to begin with border-wise. All right, now, Let's pick up our pen, and for today, I am think I'm going to use my dark blue PN. Hopefully you can tell that's dark blue. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna use a string today, just work within my borders, okay? So I want you guys to close your eyes for a minute, take another deep breath. All right, now, I don't want you to watch the video if you can possibly help it, okay? It's okay if you do, but if you cannot, I want you to follow along with my voice, okay? We're going to put some randomly spaced dots in this area. I'm just going to put them wherever I want. Yes, I'm going to use the word willy-nilly today. Y'all get used to it. It's my favorite word, or one of them. You can put them wherever you want to, okay? Can't do it wrong, can't get them in the wrong place, can't get too many, can't get too few, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick one pair and I'm gonna draw a straight line between those two. So y'all draw a straight line between two of your dots uh, that are on your tile. Then what we're going to do is we're going to echo this uh, in very much the same way that uh, we did um, two hearts, okay? So we're gonna start on the line and just slowly puff it out from there. You can put as many or as few as you want. And when you're finished with one side, just flip your tile. Well, sort of made a mess there. That's okay. So you have something <laughs> that sort of looks like this, okay? So it has an almond shape, yeah? Now, what I want you to do is from this line on the end, or whichever one you want to do, I want you to connect a straight line to the next dot. It doesn't have to be a specific one. Uh, just wherever you want this to go. Now, these two are on mine are going to be shorter, but then I want you to treat it exactly the same way. Echo the sides out. Now I am sparkling this, which ends up being just a gap in the line. Like 
this, okay? Once again, so I think this one needs some more, so I'm gonna put some more. Cannot get this wrong, guys, because whatever you do, it's gonna be perfect, all right? So now, from the end of this, we wanna go to the next dot. Now, I can take this over here, or I can go down here. I think for this one, I'm gonna go down here, straight line, and again, echo that. These don't have to be perfect, guys. Isn't that wonderful? That's wonderful for me. It's great news for me. Now, when I come to another element, I'm going to stop drawing or draw behind, okay? So this is where I'm at now. Now, I want to give you another tip or suggestion for a way to handle this. Uh, suppose I wanted to connect this dot to this dot. That would just be straight holobah. We can absolutely do that, right? And then you just add your echo lines. And then turn your tile and add your other side. Always taking your time. Always relaxing. When you're finished with that one, repeat. Keep going wherever it is you want to go next. No one can tell you to do it differently because this is your art. Just enjoy the drawing process. The dots, the straight lines, the echo lines. If you get a gap that you feel is too large, just stick an extra line in there. By the time we get this shaded, you will not know the difference. So I just want you to repeat. This is what we're doing today. This is one of my favorite um, voice guided meditations, this, this pattern in, done in this way. Um, Molly Hollibaugh did this for us at CZT seminar and it's just a wonderful exercise. You are gonna love the result and you're going to love um, the relaxation, I think. You know, occasionally when I sparkle these, I'll stick in a dot and you don't have to do it. You don't have to sparkle it at all. If you're a beginner and that's just a little too much for you, then don't worry. Goodness. So I like mine pretty dense, but uh, of course you can do yours however you like. And again, you can make them as fat or as skinny as you want as well. Now, I'm going to put another one from here and go underneath Hollabaugh style. Well, I didn't quite get my dot there, did I? <laughs> well, we know what that's gonna mean, don't we? Our straight line's really over here. This is an extremely forgiving pattern for those of you who wiggle. I think you're gonna find that once the shading is added in, you're not gonna believe the result that you end up with. And that's, that's my goal, is to show you that complex does not have to mean, uh, or a beautiful tangling does not have to be um, stressful or uh, full of anxiety or whatever. Now 
On these, you don't want your sparkles to be exactly in the same place on each line, or it looks a little funky, but you do want them to be in the same general area. Okay. Uh, let's go underneath with this one, too. Okay, keep going. Now, if you don't have a dot someplace and you want your garlic cloves to go visit that spot, then put another dot and go for it. You may stop this at any time that you feel like you have exactly what you want and you want to stop, you can. You can see this one's quite a bit smaller than the others. It doesn't matter, okay? Dot, straight line, echo lines. And it ends up being just the perfect little thing. I'm always relaxed when I do this. Just make them as nice and neat as you want. Throw them in there wherever you want. All right, now um, let's go. Let's go up here. Just keep going with your little echo lines until you feel you are finished. Now you can see my lines are all over the place. I, I can't get anything to work right. Uh, they're, they're a little bit uneven, they're different sizes. It does not matter, okay? All right, and let's, do I want this one to go back here? Do I want it to come here and then maybe connect these two? Uh, Once again, yours should all look different from mine. I really want you to please yourself, relax yourself. This is great practice. And you're really going to love the results. So I think I'm going to put a slightly curved line here and see what I can do about that. Which of course means my echo lines have to curve as well. Now, I like to uh, stick in orbs and ink when I have the appropriate places, but you do not have to, of course. I think over here, I'm going to put another one behind right there.
River is snoring up a storm. So once again, I'm going to treat the uh, little interstices, the little gaps, the way I do um, flux or uh, poke leaf or poke root or anything. I'm just going to stick little orbs in there in the spots where uh, there's a space. You do not have to do that. I find that with this tangle, the more densely packed you can have it, the prettier your result tends to be, or the cooler. On the ones you're drawing behind, you know, don't bother with the sparkling. It's, you know, pointless there. Now, I believe I have something attached to all of my dots. Now, I'm going to think, what else do I want to add here? Do I want to add some partials coming out? I want to do something to fill my space a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is add more dots and more of these straight lines and echo lines. Now, uh, I think I will start putting these off towards the sides and just filling that out a little bit. I'm just going to do partial ones here. And then still add my orbs and ink where it's necessary or needed. When we get done, there's going to be so much going on in here to look at that your eyes are not going to notice all the little uh, line problems, okay? This is extremely dynamic once the shading is done. Now, if you set them up in this way here, you can do them that way and have something very uh, botanical, very floral. Okay. Mm. Just take your time, stay relaxed. Okay. 
Ooh. Okay. If you get something in the wrong space, just relax. You can tell that, that nobody's worrying about the lines at this point. It's, wow, that's kind of cool looking. And it is kind of cool looking, isn't it? Just keep looking for gaps and filling them in. I think over here in this weird corner, I'm just going to put a partial one. All right, just a few more spots. And we will call it done, except for the shading. The shading is gonna be a big part of this.
to keep in mind you can turn these um, change what you're doing uh, do whatever you want this is very much an intuitive pattern where you just go your own way and do your own thing and I really like that quality I also especially like it because it's easy on us wigglers with our lines it's very easy to have wiggly lines with this and still have something dynamic which is good because I like that I know all you wiggly people are gonna love this I don't think I've ever had a bad result with garlic clove. Z. All right, now this is what we've got. Okay, now tell me, tell me this isn't very cool looking and we're not even done. We haven't even started the shading. Now, if you've got lines here and there that you want to add spaces, do. Now, of course, I am really messy. But like I said, this is going to turn out great no matter the mess. So let's get our pencils out here really quickly and shade. Now, I have decided because I used a blue pen... Uh, that I would like to try one of my Verithins for shading on this, if I can find one in a shade that I think will be dark enough to work against this dark blue ink. And uh, so let me see what I've got in here. I have a green. It's not really where I wanted to go with this. I have an aqua. I wonder what this would look like. That might be really pretty. And remember, if you decide to color with, with colored pencil, th uh, that is great. So what I'm doing is I'm adding color at the tips of these. And if you'll remember, we did something similar um, where we added color at the tips and then we sort of highlighted with charcoal um, pencil or Prismacolor or something the middles. This is the same type of shading, the same, the same theory of shading. So I'm using an aquamarine, uh, or is this turquoise? No, it's aquamarine uh, Prismacolor Verithin. Where they overlap, you're going to lay this down. Again, if I decide this isn't dark enough, then I can go back and um, add pencil over it if I want, or, or even a darker color. Uh, I could come in here um, really easily with, for example, um, my um, violet blue. That would work really well in conjunction with what we've got here. So um, let me show you that. And so a darker blue or purple or whatever would go really well down at the ends and make that even more, uh, pop out even more and be more dynamic. So you can really go either way or both, whatever is gonna work for you. So this is what I'm gonna do. So if you've got a nice uh, uh, colored pencil that's not too thick, I don't recommend regular Prismacolors for this because you want to see your lines from beneath, but of course you could go over them very gently and lightly. Uh, I just really like my Verithins for this because your lines still show through and you're able to tent them. Uh, tent them, not tent them. I know. <laughs> I'm a homograph waiting to happen, aren't I? This is going to be beautiful. Okay. 
And some of these are not gonna have much highlight and that's okay. So I uh, had a really good comment on um, yesterday's video and a quote that uh, if I could uh, remember it well, um, something about when I was talking about perfection and, um, and the relation to beauty and what's in the eye of the beholder, um, someone left a quote from, from an artist saying that artist, an artist sees um, if, if all an artist sees uh, is perfection, then wait, I'm going to have to look it up. It was really good. It's worth, it's worth repeating for you guys. I pinned it to yesterday's video. But whatever it is, <laughs> it's right. That, that we can't find perfection in our art. And if we expect it, we're always disappointed. And this is, this is a great message for me as well as you guys. You're not going to have perfect art. You just won't. Now you can somewhat blend colored pencil with a tortillon, um, somewhat. Uh, I had a comment uh, about a week ago about blending solution, and there's a specific reason why I do not use blending solution in when I am shading with color most of the time. Now, that's not always the case, but most of the time, if I'm using color to shade as I am in this instance, um, then I lost my train of thought. Good, good, good. So this is very, it's a very different thing than coloring in sections. This is, you know, shading with color, basically. And it's really effective and cool. It, it can be frustrating though. So if you are trying to blend Prismacolors, um, that's gonna be tough. They are so opaque, so they cover so well, and that's one of their both positive and negative traits. Uh, but um, they're wonderful pencils, don't get me wrong. I love my Prismacolors, much more comfortable using those than I am my uh, Polychromos, though, what I discovered yesterday with the yellow was that they, they function very similarly to my Varathins in that they are not opaque uh, like my Prismacolors. They are much more transparent, and that's, you know, that's a, it's a good thing to know your tools, know your pencils, know uh, what their binding agents are and, and how they function um, in your art. Uh, that is... That is something that makes you more effective. It's not that the tools have to be perfect. It's that you understand the the tools that you have at a level where you're able to make them, you know, you have what you need for whatever your situation is. So, um, yeah, this is going to need to be blended out for sure. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love how this turns out. I mean, what's not to love here? And it wasn't stressful. My beginners can do it. My intermediates can do it. The Y'all that are advanced probably don't watch these videos, but you can do it. And I want to caution you guys, just because a CZT is a CZT, that doesn't mean they know everything. I certainly don't which is why I take lessons from any Oaken. Graphic up there. Mm. All right. All right, let's blend this. And then if we need a darker um, color anywhere, then we will um, pull out our, um, you know what I'm saying. We'll pull out our other pencil. Let me... All right, get the right edge of this. I 
this is has been used so much that I've got to get a new one. I have been ordering them constantly from from the grocery store, and I never ever they are never in stock, so it's frustrating. All right. Okay, so for example, let's look at this blending solution. I know a lot of people have pretty clay pots and jars and special stuff. I just keep mine in there. I don't think my color contamination is enough to get excited about. If you're gonna use blending solution, the problem with this is um, making sure you get it where you want it. Make sure that that paper stump or your tortillon, whatever you're using it with is completely clean before you get started. What the blending solution does is it dissolves the, the, um, the wax in the pencil is as in Prismacolor. No, yes, as in Prismacolor's case. Uh, the binding agent that puts the pigment in a pencil form is a wax for a Prismacolor. Uh, for polychromos, it is, is an oil, so they're going to behave differently. The wax uh, part of Prismacolors is what makes them so good at covering up um, things, like that's the reason why the white Prismacolor is so good at what it does, is because of that wax in the, in the binding agents. Uh, what this does is it releases the pigment, pigment from the binding agent. And so, um, particularly with my Prismacolors, I noticed that, that um, it unlocks colors that I have uh, pr previously not seen. And uh, I think last year at some point I had a little blending tutorial for colored pencil in there. You might want to look in that playlist. I'm not sure. But... Um, Yeah, there, there, there are several ways to blend colored pencil, and we had a discussion, a good discussion at, at around this time about, about using uh, either like alcohol, regular rubbing alcohol, or, or um, uh, Vaseline. You can use all of those methods, but almost all of them are tough on, tougher on your paper than this method. Hang on. Now this does make spreading and blending your colored pencil much easier. And you don't need a lot. As you can see, I dipped my tortillon or my paper stump in this case once. And uh, that's all I'm gonna need, I think, for this entire tile. Now if you've got thicker pencil, you might need to um, dip again, sometimes a couple of times. It, the more porous the, the tile that you're using or the surface that you're using. So in this case, this is a very porous tile. That's why it takes water well. Um, these types of tiles are going to require more blending solution than you would normally use, I think, on a different kind of paper. So just stuff to take into consideration. Also, if you use blending solution, your uh, result, um, when you put down more color, you will, you will have an even stronger result. Now, this is the one where I put both purple and blue, or aquamarine. Hmm. Look at this. I really like this. I am going to go ahead and grab my pencil. I think I'm going to like that result a little better than the purple in here. And I'm just going to right where the edges are, right down at the bottoms. 
and I'm going to keep my graphite really, really small in there. Well, at least that's my goal. So see, you can put it right on over. You don't need a lot, but it makes a huge difference in the depth right there. And the color still shines through. So that's a win for me. So I'm going to do that in a couple of spots. Just right around the bases. In these areas where a bunch of them come together, I'm going to want to put color down there. It's going to enhance the density, the really fine, dense look this is going to have. Yep. <laughs> Welcome to Oklahoma Drivers. All right. Okay, guys. 
this is where we're going to stop today. I hope you guys have had fun with this. And more than that, I hope it has relaxed you tremendously, as it always does for me. This is garlic cloves. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful? And the last thing I would do, I think, if on any of these where your color is too much, like if you get it too far in and you blend it up and it's just covering the whole thing, then that's the time to bring your white charcoal or your Prismacolor in and just brighten those middles a little bit. It's always nicer if you can do it naturally, but if you can't, you know, stuff happens. All right, guys. <laughs> I love garlic cloves. I hope you do too. And I'm going to see you guys tomorrow for day 17. Nope. Day 18. I can't keep track, guys.